guys. Okay. Didn't get to do this one yesterday, but... I decided to just go ahead and do it now. This is the last one that I'm going to do out of the... Uh, Could have left that plan. No, that's fine. Anyway. Out of the barn building uh, pins. This one's called Building a Barn Part 1. I don't even know if the Part 2 thing is on here, but... Just gonna give, give another little idea of you know what I've been, what I've saved on here, and we're still I'm still gonna stick with uh, the videos of the cabin builds from Kyle's Cabin uh, YouTube channel, Kyle's Cabin, and more than likely we'll end up doing our off grid cabin that way. So. Unless we have help from this friend of ours, it's supposed to be down here. So, I don't know. We'll see. Just kind of depends on what happens first. Anyway. Building a barn part one. Again, I don't even know if I have the part two pin saved. One of the reasons we moved out to the Caribou region of BC, British Columbia, was to... Have some acreage way out in the bush, raise a few animals, and have a huge vegetable garden. Here's how we went about building a barn, which was really needed here on our property. And it's definitely needed on ours. How we built a barn on a budget. Okay, come on, really? Stupid thing. My screen's getting stuck. Building a barn. Since there wasn't a barn here when we arrived, we had to build one. And we do too. We tossed around a few ideas. We wanted it to be inexpensive but solid. Exactly. We wanted to custom build it for what we would use it for. Pigs, laying hens, and some meat birds, livestock, feed storage. Us, it's going to be... Excuse me. Sorry. The dairy cows. Or dairy cow. Dairy cows, whatever. Dairy cow and a calf, obviously, because they have to be kept lactating, so you can continue milking them. And that'll be the reason for the cow. I don't know if we're going to get into raising a beef cow or not. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway. Um, but yeah, the dairy cow. Horses, at least two of them. And possibly sheep. I'm thinking about it. For the reason that I said in my other video. And around the video that I put out yesterday. And goats. Dairy goats. Give us different milk, different cheeses, that kind of thing. Um pigs for the possibility of being able to get free piglets and definitely chickens ducks geese turkeys guineas yeah but those are all going to be separate coops in a separate area the bigger animals are going to be in the big barn so which is going to be the dairy cows and the horses and if we do sheep and then the goats, and I'll probably house them together, and then the pigs, and a section of the barn will have the rabbits and the quail in it, too. So, anyway. So we thought and thought and thought some more. One night after a few drinks, funny how ideas sometimes flow better when the wine is flowing, lol. I don't drink anymore. I used to. Not much. Once in a while. I just... I have no desire. It's just not worth it to me. I also don't like how I feel with alcohol in my system. We had a bit of a eureka moment. Why not do a barn build in two stages? 
This would spread out the cost over a couple of years, plus it would enable us to move our laying hens down, down there sooner rather than later and get them settled in. We could get a couple of feeder pigs in the spring to raise over the summer and then butcher in the fall. See, that's probably what I'll do is my goal, my goal is to get us, I wonder if I should even say that in this video. Yeah, I'll go ahead and say it. All right. To give this video a little bit something more than just on a barn build, which our goals right now, our homesteading goals, especially for the property, is to be on the property somehow, some way this spring. Transportation. I don't care if we have to get a couple of freaking horses. Even renting them from somewhere. That might sound a little primitive, but if that's what we have to do, that's what we have to do to get out there. I don't care. The roads out in that area are a lot better than they were back in the spring. So, yeah, we could get horses out there. And we know how we can get to that property because of the people that live there or that live in that area, literally walking distance from our property. And they were in church again today, so... And they're more than willing to help us get on that property. So, things are looking up. And again, okay, our goal is to get on that property in the spring. Somehow this spring. Why this spring? Number one, because our gardens... I I don't want to do any more container gardening out here. I just don't. It did not work very well. I don't have the space. It's it's just not working. I want to be able to plant our gardens on the property. I want to be able to get to and from from here through the winter and build our garden beds. I don't need to dig to build garden beds. We just need the pallets which i can get up there and the logs on the property and if we have to borrow a drill from somebody from our church we will that's not going to be an issue but i want to get those garden beds built and filled and that's where i want to be able to plant our gardens when i get them planted obviously i'm going to have to be able to tend them so, our goal is to be on the property this spring. Somehow, some way, that's our goal. Along with hopefully getting out of here and that the place that we'll hang on to for a while hopefully will be in town. Even if it's another trailer. Just because it'll be easier for us to get to and from work while we're in the trailer. But however we get out to the property, that's how we're going to get to and from work while we're staying on the property. So, And hopefully, we'll be able to get a camper trailer. Because that'll give us something to stay in while we're building our house, even our off-grid cabin. So we have something to stay in on the property and be able to get more work in. And build a privacy fence and the garden beds and our cabin and so on and so on and so on but yeah that's our goal is to be able to get on the property this spring anyway back to the subject at hand putting pen to paper we came up with a half barn since we would also need a place to store either extra vehicles or our future tractor which we are not going to have we would end up with two sections with a breezeway in between. Sounded perfect. And so we began. Graham excavated and poured footings. Then he stuck those saddle things in the concrete. We got some logs. Stupid hands. We got some logs. Gross. 
We got some logs from the barn next door. From when the barn next door was taken down. So he used those for the posts. The above picture shows what the first half barn looked like with the rafters up. I don't know if I can show it to you or not. Um, we'll see. I end up getting so much glare. Yeah. Can't really see it. So much glare. Anyway. Sorry I couldn't show it to you guys. Anyway. Um... He cut all the wood except for those logs from the, barn, from the barn next door to size with his sawmill. Then came the strapping, and you can see him trimming the strapping in the picture. Okay. Now, as far as our cutting the logs, we do know a few people with a chainsaw that it's willing to help out. Uh, we, ha we have some available help for that, so... We'll get it done. Or any other. We'll get it done. Putting a metal roof on the barn. Next came the metal roof. Metal roofs are great. Zero maintenance ever, and they last more than 50 years. I think it took us four hours to put it on. It is not that hard to do. It's probably what we'll do. I'm actually even considering that for the off-grid cabin is a metal roof. Because they do last a long time. It's not a job you want to do if there is any wind. Then an easy job turns into a nightmare. I can imagine. Also, that last sheet is a bugger to put on. And if it helps you... If it helps if you have... And it helps if you have a couple of ladders for doing it. I'm not one for heights, so... I'm going to have to have someone help us do that. So I don't know how well I would be on a ladder. Now when I get on a ladder, the height makes me dizzy. So I don't know. Definitely going to have some help for that one. But again, we have more people to turn to now for this kind of thing. So, Although our half barn may look a little strange right now, building this barn in two stages was a great idea. and enabled us to get enough build to move our chickens into their new coop. It also split the cost of materials so that we didn't go into debt to build the barn. And we're definitely not going to do that. There's a lot of places around here. Like, we've seen people throwing away large pieces of sheet metal. Like, roofing sheet metal. So we should be able to get some of that stuff for free, if not all of it. Plus, we can get pallets for free. We can... A lot, the logs right in our property. We can use those. We put tar paper over the insulated chicken coop. Eventually, we were able to put wood siding over the black paper. Now, I might buy some tar paper because that does help insulate. And you're going to want that like in the, in the winter and the cold weather. If we ever get cold weather. It did get cold for a little bit here. Now it's like. It's like we had a little bit of winter. And then it went back to summer. <laughs> now things are starting to come together. Those fence posts you see. Will be two separate runs. For our laying hens. We wanted two runs. So that the chickens can be in one. While a bit of ryegrass or alfalfa. Is growing in the other. Not a bad idea. But we're also, I'm also going to make a large run. And I showed you that guys that yesterday on the green poster board. I'm going to try to make a large run behind uh, the coop area for, for it to be like a large bird run for all of the birds. The ultimate goal is to have greens growing in either run and rotate the hens between them. And that's kind of thinking that. This will allow them to nibble a bit, and when it's eaten down, they get moved to the other run. Okay, so we have two little tiny doors on one side, and one on the side, and one on the front with black tar paper. 
We can just close off whatever door we like and choose the run we want them in. The upper hole is for the window, one on one side and one on the front. The half barn. Building a barn in two stages. Here is the half barn. The picture was taken from our porch. This is pretty much the way we thought the barn would stay until the following year, except we wanted to finish off the siding. Chickens on one side and our two piggies on the other. Piggies. Sounds like me. See the temporary greenhouse we set up in our first couple of... Okay, that's what... They actually show... Um, like the wood frame with the plastic green, the greenhouse plastic over it. Temporary greenhouse we set up in our first couple of years that would disappear the following year. When we figured out how to build a greenhouse for under $200. And I'm probably going to see if I can uh, look into that one and save that pin. Because we definitely want a greenhouse... I'm considering getting one of the ones that are pre-built. So I don't know if I really want to build one. But if I have to, I will. Because we do need a greenhouse. We have too many tropical plants. The roof panels of the one in the photo would become the roof for our permanent greenhouse. Stupid ads. Back to the barn building. That fall, our, our parents came for a week. They like to keep busy and love to help us with a project. So my dad got busy doing firewood while Graham, Graham and his dad figured out, figured, well, why not put up the other half barn? Check out the posts and the bracing. Those are very sturdy posts. They won't have any trouble supporting the roof and the amount of snow we can get in the winter. See, that's just like us with the logs on the property. That's not going to be an issue either. There goes the strapping, then comes the metal roofing. The metal roof sheets didn't cost a lot and are well worth the investment. The finished shell of the barn and the outer shell is completed before the snow flies. There's even storage for this winter for Graham's old beauty. Truck. Here you can really see the breezeway between the two half barns. We are loving the way it is turning out. <laughs> Not cool. Like, the barn, there's a barn section on either side, and there's a breezeway down the middle. There will be a couple of rooms for meat birds where the truck is parked now, plus we'll design those rooms so if we eventually want a cow or horse in there, we can easily accommodate them. We will also have a feed room. We will close in the upper portion and use it for hay storage. Okay, yeah, we'll have to have a hay loft in our barn as well. But I'm going to try to make sure we can grow all of ours. The next chapter on the second part of how to build a barn, we build separate rooms and made an awesome swinging wall. If you need to build a barn or are waiting to move to your bare land, here's a good resource. How to build small barns and outbuildings will take you step by step through this process. I might get on there and see if I can save that. Sorry, I'm trying to see if I can get this to come up. Maybe I'll just combine it instead of doing two separate videos. Ha! Alright, I'm going to combine it instead of doing two separate ones. So this is part two. Here's part two of how we built our barn in two sections. If you are looking at how to build a barn, you will get lots of ideas from these posts. Here's a picture of how our barn looked at the end of the first year. Okay, I wish I could show it, but I can't. All I can do is explain it. We got farther along in the building than we thought we would. You can see the chicken coop on the left is completed. Behind the coop is our feed area. To this day, it remains open, although we had intended to close it in by putting siding on the outside walls. We will likely still do that at some point. It just has not got it just has not gotten that high on our priority list. The right hand side come on, stupid ads. The right hand side of the barn where the old truck is has been completely closed in. 
We turned it into a large room where we can raise our Cornish giant meat chickens. Here's how we did that. Okay, they do kind of show it, but again, I, I can't show it. I wish I could. There's too much glare. We framed in that right side, allowing for one window on the end and two windows along the side. There are also a total of three man doors. This room is now being used for a variety of things. Let's look at what we use this room for during any given year. It's important to plan ahead when you are figuring out the blueprint for your barn. Try to cover all the possibilities so that you can build it to adapt to what you will use it for. When we raise meat birds, we set up heat lights and they grow out they grow out in that room. When we raise wiener pigs, they start off in this room. We get them we get them around the end of March and there is still far too much snow on the ground for us to have them outside. We throw lots of hay down on the dirt floor and the wieners stay in there for probably sorry. That was it. For probably four to five weeks. At that point, we move them out to a pastured area and they sleep in their own little house. Since we have quite a few predators here in the valley, there is no way we would put small wiener pigs out in the open right away. They are probably about 30 pounds when they arrive and are far too small to be able to fend off predators. Yeah, we'll have to... Okay, yes, we'll have to be careful of that, but again, we're going to have a privacy fence around the whole living space. So that's going to help us out so much. The bigger predators are not going to be as big of a deal. Once the wieners are moved out, we open up the big end doors and clean out the room. The photo shows Graham's old truck being stored in that room for winter. Note, if you have a dirt floor in your barn, you may want to put down a layer of sand on top of that dirt. Then throw your hay on top of that. It makes cleanup easier. It is quite amazing. The used bedding hay lifts lifts right off the sand much easier than with a dirt floor not a bad idea so sand and then hay we let the room air out for several weeks then we set up the heat lamps feeders and waterers for the meat birds once they are grown out and sent to freezer camp we clean out the room again actually the room gets cleaned out probably three times while the meat birds are there as they generate a lot of manure After the room is again thoroughly cleaned out, it is usually late fall. Time for cleanup and putting things away. Many items get put into this room for storing over winter. If we put the old truck in there, we simply put our tools in the bed of the truck. Then the truck stays there until mid-March, when we take it out again and get ready for the pigs again. So this meat bird room is more of a multi-purpose room, and it's a great to have a room like that in your barn. Use it seasonally like we do for different things, but try to plan ahead for various uses. This way you can make the appropriate changes to your barn building plans. Not a bad idea. Back to the building. Friends in the valley had a lot of extra insulation laying around that they weren't going to use and they were happy to pass it along to us. Here you can see that the meat bird room is now totally framed in and insulating, and insulating can begin. Now, as far as that goes, I would probably just ask around and see if, you know, we might be able to get a bunch of it for free. Stuff that people were throwing away. We never know. You don't know till you ask. Here's that room being insulated and then covered with OSB. The room, this room should be quite warm during the early spring when the wiener pigs arrive. Homemade hinges for two large doors that Graham made with a forge. And that wouldn't be that hard to do. Here's how it looks with those end doors open. That thing on the inside left wall is the greenhouse, the one we had under the porch. We used to store the pieces in this room for winter. The lumber that you see in the breezeway is all the wood we reclaimed from building the shop foundation. Graham will reuse this wood to do some framing for those gable ends down at the barn. If you need to build a barn or are waiting to move to your bare land, you, here's a good resource. And then they give that how to build small barns and outbuildings again. And that is it on building a barn part one and two. Okay, so that didn't take as long as I thought it was going to, but...
that's okay. And that's all I'm going to do on the building the homestead barns because a lot of it is just pictures and I can't show you. So the next video is going to be starting on the homestead beekeeping on that section out of the homesteading board. So I'm going to get this video loaded and I might do another video today. I don't know. We'll see how things go. But I'm going to get this video up there and again, I hope it was some good information. Hope I give you guys some ideas. Those of you who are just moving on to land and are looking to build a barn or whatever like we are. So, but uh, if you guys haven't watched a lot of the videos, check them out, like the videos, please share the videos on all your platforms, please, because we're trying to get our channel out there and we need your help. So, like and subscribe, hit the little bell and the all on the little thing that pops up when you hit the the bell to get all the notifications and i do i it, do at least one video a day if not more so i will see you guys in the next video for homestead beekeeping bye guys